Okay, back with 50 and 50. And this is sort of the last topic that I was asked to cover. Um, I got a question about, um, I'm, for the rest of the series, I think I'm pretty packed up with, with topics. But photosynthesization. Uh, I'd like to thank Romenko Pro Genetics for supporting 50 vlogs in 50 days. Um, and this is one that I suppose is timely this time of year. You're going to see it from now on. And what is it? Uh, some farmers will be very familiar with it. Very occasional cases, sporadic cases of it. And that's often the case. Sometimes when we get a run of a large number of cases, we need to look a bit deeper. But um, ultimately, what photosynthesization is, it's a skin condition. And it's um, really what happens is we get the creation of these photodynamic agents, these uh, things that go into skin. And when you get UV light, which is sun, reacting with them, you get severe inflammation and tissue changes and damage in the skin of cattle. And I think the symptoms with them are, you'll often see the first times you'll see these, and I suppose where these tend to show up, first of all, is in around the muzzle, the vulva, the, the, the tail, the other in cows, white pigmented areas in cows as well, so dairy cows would be more prone to it. And um, we must be mindful that it's not, so, you know, to differentiate between sunburn, but typically you'll see more photosynthesization. Um, and it, all you need is that UV light. And that irritation, shows a lot of the, I suppose, the symptoms. Animals are uneasy in themselves. They can run very high temperatures. In severe cases, and farmers be aware of this, the skin can actually really peripherally slough off, it can fall off, really scab up. Um, so it's really the key things, and, and you'll see animals um, seen in bulls and cows, you know, swishing tails, going into shade, just being uncomfortable, um, and, and they can rise very high temperatures. So when we see these animals, I suppose, treatment is really important. And because, and I'll talk about the photodynamic agents, what are the agents, how can we remove them? That proves very difficult on farm, I feel. Uh, treatment, I suppose, initially you look at that this is severe inflammation, so anti-inflammatory medicines work well. Uh, I would have used corticosteroids in practice, but didn't would have just moved over to anti-inflammatories. The debate goes on about whether they should go indoors or not. By the time we see the symptoms, I think, I still think anti-inflammatories indoors are two of the basics. If the skin's infected, you need to talk to your vet, obviously, about all this, but you know whether antibiotics are necessary. Some people will talk about creams, and some cases where you get severe inflammation around the other in place, you've got to really watch out for flies. It takes about three weeks for these kind of symptoms to resolve, so you're typically bring animals indoors for two to three weeks. But the, the success rate is quite good. Um, so I suppose what's happening is we get this UV light reaction from these excessive amounts of photodynamic agents that get into skin, it's that reaction. And how can, you know, so there's so many different photodynamic agents that are ingested. Typically, as a young vet, we would have always heard about St. John's wort as a plant, buckweed, certain types of clovers. There's a list of about 15 of them there. And I think where you need to start digging into this is if you're getting a lot of uh, photosynthesis or a lot of these symptoms or cases in, in, in a herd, you've got to look at is there some issue here? Even chlorotetracycline, they're mentioned in some literature. Um, some animals, uh, limousine cattle and blonde aquatines, are supposed to have a genetic predisposition, so they're producing more of these photodynamic agents uh, genetically, so there might be a risk there, so you need to look at genetics maybe. Um, but I think, I would only dig into these if you're getting more and more issues, and it can be very difficult. I've tried to do it on a farm, walking farm, trying to look for these plants, it's not simple. Uh, but St. John's work seems to come up a lot of times when you look at classic photodynamic agents. One thing we need to remember, I think in Ireland this is particularly uh, the case, is we can have two issues here with uh, photosynthesization. That's the kind of primary ones, right? Where it's ingested photodynamic agents, or maybe genetic, slightly less, but definitely disingested cases. Uh, and sometimes we have idiopathic, which means we don't know why it happens. And then we have uh, reasons called the secondary. So if you have functioning within the liver, um, there's a product called phylorethra, which is a breakdown product of chlorophyll, which comes from grass. And where you have poor liver function, this process uh, doesn't occur properly, and you get an excess of these in the bloodstream and in the skin. And you can, because of liver damage, you can have secondary photosynthesization. So we have the primary ingestion and the sunlight reaction, and then we have, because of liver issues, we can have issues with this excess phylorethra, and that can cause problems. Um, that we would associate as photosynthesization, but we might need to look under the hood. And we have sort of seen, in my experience, um, more issues with photosynthesization, and maybe it's to do also with our issues with liver fluke on farms. So you just need to be mindful of that if it is occurring in your farm. Um, I suppose on prevention, 
Um, year to year you have to look at your risks, what levels are acceptable, if it's an occasional case, you're treating them, they're okay. I mean, uh, you go hunting for these photodynamic agents, I've tried it, it's not very successful. Um, I have read somewhere in the literature about minerals and zinc being supplemented for skin health, helping it. I think in Ireland we've got to be mindful of flu control if you're getting an increased herd incidence. And just be aware that those two breeds, particularly limousine, um, and bland equity might have a genetic predisposition so you need to look back and be first at genetics there maybe um, okay so that's photosynthesization it's something we need to be mindful for looking out for at the moment and I think it's an issue that uh, slightly seen more of it's not a huge issue in farm because the response to treatment is good once the liver isn't damaged very poor response here but you will see a lot of other symptoms maybe in those cases okay so that's photosynthesization Okay, today's thought for today, something that I struggle with from time to time, and it's very important, is time management, you know, and looking at the value in time management, looking at what you need to do. What are you going to have more impact from? Uh, was it Pareto Pareto, the 80%, uh, 20% rule? So 20% of what we do will give us 80% of our outcomes. Uh, and that's very important to focus on things, uh, particularly on farm in our lives, that will have the most impact. And good time management and being really organized and focused and I feel like a little bit of a tailor with a hole in his pants here because I need to take my own advice it is the way to go. So good time management, good focus on the things that will give us the best outcomes um, is, is, is my thought for today. Happy safe farming.